The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. I got a fever, and the only prescription is both over the line! This, I'm sorry, Smokey, you were over the line, this is the Is the cigar authority. Is it true that if you don't use it, you lose it? The authority. Is that a serious question? On everything cigar. No, it wasn't. Yeah. It's like I picked the wrong week to quit smoking. And out of the cigar industry. That was pretty awesome. With your host. You have to use so many cuss words. David Garofalo. Whenever I'm about to do something, I think, would an idiot do that? And if they would, I do not do that thing. Mr. Jonathan. Check out the name tag. You're in my world now, Grandma. Barry Stump. Put the scotch on the rocks. Any scotch will do, as long as it's not a blend, of course. Uh, single malt. Glenolivic, Glenfiddich, perhaps. Maybe a Glen Gow. Any Glen. It's time to light them up. Sounds really fun. It's time. Cool. Cool. Cool, cool. cool. For the Cigar Authority. I gotta have more cowbell. Light them up, light them up, light them up, everybody. Saturday, January 6, 2018. Broadcasting live from the La Flor Dominicana Cigar Soundstage. And Happy New Year to all our viewers and listeners out there. Today on the Cigar Authority, we're going to give you the state of the cigar industry address. What is happening in the cigar industry and where is it headed? Welcome, everybody, to the first edition of 2018 of the Cigar Authority. And you're listening to the Cigar Authority, broadcasting over eight years, making it the longest continually running cigar podcast. Awarded the Ambassadors of Cigars by Cigar Journal Magazine, Awarded the top 10 educational podcast by Podbean four years in a row, The Cigar Authority is now the most listened to cigar podcast in the world. Cigar radio at its finest. The Cigar Authority is a proud member of the United Podcast Network, and you can catch the podcast on demand at any time or our daily blog on thecigarauthority.com. So New Year's resolution, this year I am going to get a tattoo. No. No, I'm going to smoke a tattoo. <laughs> That's the first cigar we're going to smoke Literally, of the new year. nobody believed you. No. no. <laughs> Low tolerance for pain. And you could never make up your mind of what you want on your body yeah, for the rest of your life. There's no way. I can't even fathom even doing that. So uh, this will be uh, uh, Pete Johnson from Tatuaje, meaning the word tattoo. He came out with a brand called Tattoo. Uh, a good value price. Tell us about it, Barry. Well, today's cigar is Tattoo by Twa- Tatuaje. And it's made in Nicaragua for Tatuate cigars at Tabacalera Cubana. It measures 5.5 by 58. The size is called the Adavino. And it features an Ecuadorian Habano over Nicaraguan binder and fillers. It's part of the Cigar Authority Care Package. And a single cigar will set you back $6.69. While a box of 50 is just $2.92.99, which is a savings of just under $42. Or 12% off the single price at twoguyscigars.com. If you're too far away from a brick and mortar retailer that carries it, try twoguyscigars.com. That's the number two, guyscigars.com. So this becomes a value cigar now. A cigar under seven dollars now is a unbelievable value. Especially right? when you consider this is almost a sixty ring gauge. What what, what five is, and a half by fifty eight. By fifty eight. Seems small. I mean you've been a still a sixty, right? It seems small than the sixty, <laughs> but it's a it's a big Toro. Right. Toro oh, Gordo, if you will. Yeah. Uh, looks nice. Good looking uh, veins and stuff, and, but, but dark. And and unlike other Tatuaje cigars that it made it, made at the My Father Cigar Factory, this is made at Tabacalera Cubana, which is a smaller factory owned by my father. It was the factory that was the transition between Miami and My Father S.A. Right. So they still make some value cigars at that factory, which is where this comes from. Okay. All right. Let's give it a cut and light. It's time to cut our cigar. The official cutting brought to you by, speaking of value, Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo is the brand, while all other brands were raising prices, Perdomo cut out the federal S-chip tax and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. Excellence. I made the mistake of... uh Sniffing the foot, even though the last time I sniffed the foot, it made me sneeze. So now I'm stuck, half sneezing right now. It's I can feel it. It wants to come because out. Because for those that haven't been watching the news and don't know what's happening up here in the great northeast, it is cold. It's quite frigid. Quite frigid. It's uh, single digits right now. It will be in the double-digit negatives maybe tonight. Yeah. They're talking, and this is the way it's been. We are only a couple weeks into winter, and it is freezing. We've been fortunate. We've had a, a few minor 
freezes when it comes to the pipes, but we've, we're on a drip schedule now. Now, what is the um, – we had a snowstorm, but they called it some wacky thing. Bombo of- Genesis. Mambo Genesis. Bombo. Bombo? B-O-M-B? Yep. Yep. Bombo. Whatever. You know, I'm like, what the heck is this? They're starting to make things up. And then when it started snowing from below up, instead of coming from the sky, it seemed to come from the ground <laughs> up. I'm like, all right, something's happening. There was something different. We had uh, an interesting on one of our podcasts this week. I don't know how many of our listeners remember Weather with Al. Yes. Al, Al Caprillion. Caprillion. Uh, good evening. He was yeah, kind of famous yeah. for that. Yeah. Uh, so he gets on, and off the top of his head, he lists <laughs> the similarities between this storm that we just had and what was it, Grundy? They called it. They had a weird name for this the, uh, this blizzard. Um, but the and the blizzard of '78. Mm. They were the same exact storm, but the difference was '78 had a, a blockage of some kind, a low pressure blockage up north, and it held the storm in place for so many days, and that's why it. But there was three feet of snow instead of the 10 we got. So you know cigar geeks, Ten inches. guys that are really into cigars and stuff. Al Caprillion is a weather geek. Beyond yeah. geek. <laughs> Just geeks out so over the weather. The that funny, was like a Super Bowl for him. That the day. funny thing is he's retired from uh, doing the weather right now. So I call him for the test thing. I can barely get two words out of him. Hey, Al, this is Jonathan calling from the United Podcast Network. I just want to touch base. and Okay. Yeah, I just want to check your levels. If you could, I don't know, count to 10. Okay. Could you start counting now, Al? Sure. Barely get anything out of him. He'd start talking about the weather, and we couldn't get him to shut up. Yeah, that's what I heard about him, too. But very interesting cat. Very interesting cat. For sure. All right, so uh, let's light it well, up. On the pre-light, Dave. Yeah? I don't want to be accused of being Mr. Jonathan, but I'm getting... Nobody does. I'm getting Clementines. Clementines, oh my darling! You know what? I see that with a little oh bit my of darling Clementine. cinnamon. All right, Barry's giving me the heart. You know when you there's a little spicy component to it, which I'm with you a little bit on the cinnamon, but I'm I'm kind of getting a little white pepper. So the Clementine on the on the Clementine is not the orange; it is the um, it's like a seedless derivative of an orange. It's orange flavored. So normally I thought it was with an orange in a and uh, Tangerine had a baby. It's the Clementine. Yeah. That's what I always thought. I thought they were like a crossbreed. Okay. Is so, that how your parents gave so you it, the talk? Yes. So, so you have oranges. Yes. And you have peaches. And then sometimes they get together. And when you when you take a Tangerine and you've got to take the skin off, do you bite the skin and peel yes. the beginning? That's how you start. And there's the beginning taste of this, right? Yes. A hundred percent. Yeah. You are totally right. If you're an animal, you open it with your mouth. I do. Use That's your fingers. I, I like the taste of pesticides. Mm-hmm. I bite my fingernail so I can't dig into the to it, so i got to use my teeth <clears> to get it. That's why okay. I use a cigar cutter and cut my cigar. Barry oh. Stein. <laughs> Bad habit. Yes. <laughs> on, a, uh, on a lighter note, <laughs> we're going to light our cigar today with the Vertigo Bond. This lighter features aircraft aluminum, a single jet, and the Vertigo P-Bat. As it's referred to in the industry, that is the Vertigo patented big ass tank. Here we go. I feel like you need a bond name the using the bond Vertigo lighter. Bond retails for twenty nine ninety nine. So I'm going to refer to you as Doctor Jonathan Goodhead. This is the only lighter you could really light your cigar outside in this weather. Ah. <laughs> 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 uh. I'm ignoring you. (laughs) I think that's the first time I actually seen Dave somewhat lose it. (laughs) Ah, that was good. I was looking forward to Ed Sullivan coming on the show thinking maybe we would have someone else to be the butt of the joke, but apparently he just joined your team. That was quick. That was quick. That was quick. quick. Yeah. It was quick. Very good timing. With that, uh, no, I love this lighter. Twenty nine nine nine, great lighter, and you should have one. That's, that's uh, a cool looking thing. Well, it's you about know, a quarter of a tank and, of butane. You said aircraft aluminum. What, what does that mean? That's. <laughs> I just saw that. <laughs> Evidently, yeah. I hit the Bond secret gadget. No, you have it up way too high. Way too high. Well, this is the way Jonathan gave it to me. He sabotaged me. Yeah, I knew you were going to be breaking walls. <laughs> yeah. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, guys. There we go. 
That's it. You can't have your lighter up too high. And you know something? Cold weather affects lighters yes. on, on hot and cold. Uh, so that is something. They got this interesting fin on the, the top and bottom of the lighter, which doesn't allow it to heat up no matter how long. Which is usually you leave what's on, on amp racks and stuff, right? The right. back of an amp. And aircraft mm -hmm. aluminum, I think, is just regular aluminum, honestly. It just, maybe it just sounds better. Maybe there's fewer uh, impurities in it. The other thing about that lighter. In that shot, if you look at it, Jonathan, hold it up. There, there's an actual gap there. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Which is kind of cool. You, I've tested this gap, and I've stuck a piece of paper in there, and uh, it, it shuts the lighter off. Right. So right. that's where the gas comes from. Right. Yeah, but yeah, why it. do they have the space in between? Because it's even cooler the, looking that way. Right. The air? Maybe they need air. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You get yeah. a little air mixture. Really? That's there for for the. Oh end. yeah, because the jet it the jet itself is so fine. Wow, that's a cool lighter for It's pretty bucks. slick. I didn't even notice that. This is gonna make this is gonna be a lighter that uh, is not gonna have a high failure rate. I'll tell you that. Here we go. So um, so is cigar smoking a seasonal thing? Here we are at sub zero temperatures. Is cigar smoking a seasonal thing? I'm gonna say we opened. Uh, unlike uh, Barry Stein and his cohorts over in the Nashua store, uh, we opened on Thursday in the storm. Yeah. We had 28 customers that came in on a day that we would have seen normally 120. Yeah. So, yes, I'm going to go with seasonal and, and also weather-related. And we even know if we take January, February, March, and we can compare them to April, May, June, dramatic difference. Compare them to just June? Right. Dramatic difference. Right. Well, I think in the colder weather, you get the hardcore smokers, the only person that's still smoking. Well, you get the guy you, that wants to get away from his wife egg. and comes in. We're hardcore smokers. Yeah. Then you got the seasonal smoker that smokes more when the weather permits, when they can be out on their back deck and right. the wife won't nag them. Or they're on the golf course or so on and so sure. forth. Sure. It, do you think, like in Texas, way south Texas, where it gets really hot, that when 120 degree days, that, that really hurt the sales of cigars also. I would People imagine. People are not going to smoke. It's too hot to smoke. Is there such a thing? It's too hot to smoke? They're shaking their head yes. I don't think it's too hot or too cold there to smoke. Because you're, we're smoking indoors, but the majority of people are not smoking indoors. Yeah, you're not going out. Uh, maybe you could go out 120. That's hot. But if it's 90. You didn't have shed night this week, right? <laughs> no. 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 Uh, they ha they held it. I didn't go. Yeah. Well, I didn't go. I don't have that many long pairs well, of long underwear I could fit under my oh, suit. Even on my day off, I'm, I'm smoking six cigars. Yeah, yeah Dave, I would say, so. you, you know, I don't stop smoking, but the enjoyment level for me is different. And even the high humidity locations, you know, when I've been in a very humid place, I, I just don't get the same out of the cigar. And that's one thing I hated living in Miami. It was impossible to keep a cigar lit. You stepped outside and all that moisture in the air, you'd go through almost the whole tank on one cigar. And I see quite the opposite when we have our trade show in Las Vegas. It's a trade show, and this is where you're supposed to smoke and try the cigars. They're always better when we end up getting them because they're so dry when right. they're there, a dry cigar. And we did the test on the show before. Over-humidified cigar, terrible. Under-humidified cigar, terrible. It has to be right. It has to be right. So the weather is going to affect how it is. The mugginess is going to make the cigar so it doesn't burn well. Or, it's, um, you know, here we're doing uh, indoor smoking. As much as it's indoor, it's very dry because there's forced hot air. Yeah. It, it's going in and, uh, you know, we keep the cigars in the humidor and everything. But you leave, you know, is the next cigar we're going to smoke. It's still in the bag with a little humidifier in it. And I waited till the last minute to take these out because in a very, very short period of time, the cigar starts drying out. Yeah, this type we're, of we're dealing with humidity in the teens right now. Yeah. Which uh, I have a theory about this. I've been discussing humidity with my friend Walter over here. And my theory for the wintertime, it's cold and dry because all of the humidity condenses out of the air and it ends up on the ground. We got all this humidity sitting out frozen all over the place. It's just not in the air. Yeah. It's all been taken out of the air. So it's there too. Put that in your pipe and smoke it, there Walter. There we go. You, you have finally <laughs> he finally agrees. Another thing happens in hot temperatures, it creates the tobacco beetle. Yep. Hatches at anything at 
80 degrees or something like that, you're going to start running the risk at that point of a tobacco beetle. Certainly, that's not going to happen around here because everything's frozen solid. But then again, when everything, when, when the cigar is very cold, and Barry, you've had cigars off the truck, yes. they explode. Yes. Uh, the hot temperature of your lighter going through the cold temperature of the cigar is bad. The um, a thicker you know, a thicker outer wrapper. You got a Connecticut broadleaf on there. It can kind of stand up to it, but forget about lighting up a Connecticut shade of any kind, whether it's real Connecticut or Ecuadorian grown Connecticut or Nicaraguan. It's just too thin to be able to stand up to that expansion once you hit it with a match. So, what is the best weather? to smoke a cigar. If you're going to live somewhere, you're a cigar smoker, say, I want to go where cigars are going to taste the best. Where should I live? Southern California? Yep, I'm going to say guess. San Diego. Really? 70, 70 all year round? Yeah, you don't even need a cigars. Any and humidity-wise, it's good? Yeah. Yeah, you just leave them right on the table. You're all set. Yeah, hey, a lot of moon bats live high there. High 60s, yeah. low 70s. With, Cal with California comes... Those people. Yeah, I'll take I'll take yes. the uh, I'll take the uh, instead of snowflakes on the ground, they're all around. Me. Right. <laughs> so, uh, and that is an inappropriate term for 2018, by the way. So, yeah. Dave, even though it's perfect smoking temperature and humidity, based on the price you're paying for the cigars, mm. you're going to smoke That's fewer of them. That's another thing too, right? So it, but it, you say it does matter the wrapper style. So here we are smoking a Nicaraguan puro. No, it's a Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, Nicaraguan by Okay. Trailer. Um, yeah, I don't see us having a problem with this. It's not going to split. We're going to be all right. If you go out there, nothing's going to hold up today. It's, it's single digits right now, I don't think. This will probably hold up a little bit longer than in Connecticut. Have you been smoking in the car on the way to work? Yeah, Sullivan, I know you have. Yes, I have. And interestingly enough, I've smoked cigars that I've left in the car. Yep, same here. This and? morning I had a, car, a cigar that was in there for two days. And? And it smoked the, perfectly. The Connecticut shade does not hold up, but yes, uh, I've, I've got a box of um, A.J. Fernandez Last Call in Maduro, which you, is... A you don't keep a cigar in the car, you keep a box of cigars in the car? Exactly. exactly. What, <laughs> what if, God forbid, I forgot to bring one and I start driving and I... On the way to work at a cigar store, yes. Correct. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> so so the, the Broadleaf definitely holds up better. In this weather. And I, I, I ascribe to uh, when you smoke as quickly as Ed Sullivan does, and as I do, it's there's nothing wrong with having a box of cigars in your car. No, Not no. Connecticut, but anything else, and, and, you're, and you're okay. I have them in the glove compartment. I shove some cigars in there, and it, it's so and there's so much stuff in there. Every once in a while, I'm digging through, and I see a cigar that's been sitting there for a long time. Usually, I do not have a good experience with that cigar that's been forgotten about. Yeah, I was surprised. I smoked a Berlin Wall box press, which is now available at twoguyscigars.com. Shameless plug. There we go. Um, but it held up really well considering how cold it was. It was one degree when I left my house this morning. And it, that's a good hearty wrapper. And you, yeah. to box press a cigar, you have to slightly underfill it anyways. Right, so you're so going to have a little more give on that wrapper. Right. In the colder weather, you're probably better off smoking a box press cigar because there's more give. So when it expands, it might become a little bit more round. Uh, but it's not going to crack as easily, say, as a round cigar, and it's really tight. And then you smoke it on the way, then you come in, and you're still smoking the cigar, and no problems happen with it. No, I had no problem. And you can even see there's a little bit of an oily sheen on it. I have it in the ashtray. Surprise, in surprisingly. Just well constructed. I don't recommend it, folks. No, I, definitely don't well, recommend it, it also, but well construction, great construction from the guys at Hammer. Yeah. And this is an argument for leaving your cellophane on the cigars, because even though cellophane has a porous component to it, it's not completely a gateway for humidity. So you can you can keep a cigar in cellophane outside of your humidor longer than you can one that doesn't have cellophane. It's a fact. Jack? Yeah, I would say you don't want an uncellophane cigar in your freezing cold. Well, except if you're at Sullivan. Yeah, I mean, the last call is, last well, call is uncellophane. And it's a whole box of them, though. It's not the rolling around and stuff, but <laughs> it's, he, he carries a whole box of cigars in the car just in well, case. Well, two. Uh, Connecticut Shade and a Maduro usually. But you didn't like the Connecticut Shade, or you did, and you know it doesn't work very well. I know it does not work very well. You have a, a automatic starter on that thing? I do not. Wow. Living in the Stone Age. Uh, he did steering wheel, though. Oh, well, then you're all set. <laughs> then you're all set. Okay. All right, that ding-ding means it's time for the matchup of the week brought to you by VS. V 
VPS means versus, but it stands for Victor Sinclair. Victor Sinclair Cigars, who would win this hypothetical battle? And today's hypothetical battle is Mike Landell. Mike Landell. Any, anybody? Who? Any, anybody? My pillow guy? Oh, yeah. Mike well. Landell okay. versus Tom Selleck in the best mustache contest. Mike uh, Landell, that is a good mustache. I know you always talk about the Tom Selleck mustache, but check the Mike Lindell mustache, the My Pillow guy. By the way, do you have a My Pillow? No. Barry, do you have a My Pillow? No, I do not. Ed Sullivan? Yes, I do. I do too. Okay, so I do too. I love my My Pillow. All mustaches must be approved by Tom Selleck's mustache to even grow. <laughs> so it is Tom Selleck all day, every day. He has and had the most epic mustache. He's getting older ever. now. He's getting older. There's gray in it. You got uh, that's just more distinguished. A little salt and pepper action. It's good. It's Tom Selleck. Is it safe to say that means you want a mustache ride from uh, Tom Selleck? Does everybody uh, know who the My Pillow guy is across the country? Didn't know him by name, but once you said who he, what he did, what he pitched, I knew who he was. It says his name every time. Mm. You've heard it a million times. But Dave, I'm going Tom Selleck for the following reason. I don't know if you've ever watched Blue Bloods, but mm. there's always a family dinner, and somehow he gets through the dinner without a lot of debris in the ah, mustache. He knows He's how a to work the mustache. He works, knows how to work the mustache. Now, Barry, on the other hand, won't make it through the show without getting debris in his mustache, and that's the difference. And do you get creeped out when the when the guy opens up the medicine cabinet and Mike Lindell's in the <laughs> medicine cabinet? And he says, oh, what are you doing here? Like, are you kidding me? And then the wife comes over, and she doesn't have a problem with it. And, oh, you're the my pillow guy in my kitchen cabinet, in my medicine cabinet in the, in the bathroom. He's obviously getting high on their oxycodone <laughs> right. before he does the commercial. Yeah, you don't go in other people's medicine cabinets. I'm going to go with Tom Selleck because nobody really knows the pillow guy by name. Maybe. You don't know him. No, but you equate the pillow guy with the pillow. You Wait, Tom Selleck with Magnum P.I. in the mustache. All right, he so. was on Magnum P.I.? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, if you want to say Burt Reynolds, you could you could make Burt a little Reynolds, bit of an argument. Burt Reynolds versus Tom Selleck, that would have been phenomenal. That, really? Burt Reynolds' mustache is pretty epic up, as well. But I try to bring it up to date. Burt Reynolds, you know. The only, my only issue with Burt Reynolds is he doesn't always have the mustache, so. And he loses, yeah. Dave, yeah. with Burt Reynolds, you've got a tie-in with the, um, the anniversary giveaway, party. Yeah. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. I tried to way get to Bert. drop the ball on that one. We had, yeah. Or are you still mad that he wouldn't? I'm mad. I'm mad. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I wouldn't include him because he, he wanted in excess of five figures to come to the anniversary party. And I wanted him to buy not, a ticket like not low else. five figures either. <laughs> There's Tom Selleck without a mustache. Yeah, that's been doctored. <laughs> yeah, not true. He's always had the mustache. Anyway, um, why I started the cigar industry address, the state of the cigar industry address, I'm going to tell in a little while, but why did I end up doing it in the first place? And again, I don't know if it has any bearing on any consumer or anything, but I'm going to go through it as I do every year anyway, but it's because shit happens. That is the, the two words of why... I created the thing because in the early 1990s, the cigar boom came, and I, I saw it coming in advance, and I didn't plan for it. I didn't know there was going to be um, tough to get cigars and things like that. I didn't have a plan. I just wrote it out. By the mid-90s in Boston, the first cigar tax, what I thought was the first tax on cigars had happened, but it really wasn't actually the first cigar tax. 1794, Secretary of the Treasury, Alexander Hamilton introduced the first ever federal tax on tobacco products. And in 1921, Iowa became the first state to actually uh, do it by state. But anyway, in 1996, I was forced out of Massachusetts because I hadn't planned on this thing end up happening. And I didn't write it down. I didn't put information. The tax went from 12% in it was a floor tax, meaning you got to pay immediately on that tax. Later Everything going, you had in inventory. Yeah, and I had too much inventory, which I thought was a good thing. But it turned out to be a terrible thing that I had so much inventory on hand. I didn't plan for it. So at that point, 
In January 1st, 1997, I started writing this State of the Cigar Industry Address. I still have, actually, the first one I wrote, online paper of his, where the industry is right now, so that I would have something to look at and to try to start making decisions. Think about it, write it down, and do it. After that, I could see what was happening in advance. I would plan for things. So that's what I'm going to get to in the next segment. But it's the, basically your book report you give yourself every year. Yeah, it would just, just there for that. So take it for what it is. You know, it, it's, it's really only there for me. If you own your own cigar shop, maybe it's going to interest you a lot. You, you're going to agree to what I'm saying. This is where we, we are. And maybe it helps you in a way as a consumer. I would make an argument that it does help the consumer because it it is a consumable product. And things are going to change in the future. And you as the consumer need to know this so that you know who to vote for and why. Because you, you you can certainly make a change to how things are affecting the cigar industry by voting not only with your wallet when you buy certain cigars, but also by actually voting at the booth. Okay. We're smoking the tattoo. My ash just fell off finally. I was just going to say, look at this ash. How nice it just fell off. Uh, tattoo by Tatuaje Cigars. Uh, burning perfectly. Smoking really good. Um, this is a really good value. I would agree. And we have the people on the care package smoking along with me. I mean, this is a good cigar for six bucks. It's overlooked in the Tatuaje line. And, uh, Something that's missing from the flavor profile that you normally get out of Tatuajes is an aggressive peppery pepper, component. Yeah, yep. It's not there. That's completely smoothed out. It's not even on the retrohale. There's a, a little sweet component to it, but also, and I don't taste this very often, but there is a leathery component to this smoke. Sweet I agree. leather. Apparently Ed Sullivan agrees too because he only gives you the sound effect. If it's agrees. true, right. He just doesn't. I'm going to set myself up for crickets, but I'm getting a little bit of cocoa. Still some of that cinnamon component, but there's also like an underlying sour apple. Like from a now and later, the sour apple flavor. The now and later sour apple. Yes. We're going to get to that in the next segment, uh, in the next hour, because we got the next hour made for me and you. Made for me and you. Well, Jonathan, man up. Yeah, it's part of the thing. You got it. This is important. This was my segment. I created you, this. You did. You, you created it. All right, let's go to break. When we come back, what is in? What is the state of the cigar industry address? Well, uh, it happens to be information right here that I'm going to share with you. We're live at Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, and you're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. This is David Garofalo, and you've heard me say it over and over again for many years. Please support your local cigar retailer. And I mean it. If you don't buy from them, they will go away, and then what? There'll be no place to go. That being said, sometimes you're far away from any cigar shops or a place that doesn't carry the stuff you've been hearing about and you want to try it. That's where TwoGuysCigars.com comes in. It's the number, TwoGuysCigars.com. And unlike most online cigar shops, at twoguyscigars.com, you can buy a single cigar of whatever you want. You don't have to buy boxes or even five packs and suffer through cigars you might not even like. One of this and one of that is acceptable, appreciated, and commonplace at twoguyscigars.com. That's the number, twoguyscigars.com. Thank you for your business. Ooh, we're going to have fun. When the Cigar Authority returns on the United Podcast Network. There was a time when cigars were the hallmark of elegance and success. In this time gone by, the aficionado would revel in opening a beautiful box, only to find their favorite celebratory smoke emblazoned with a heritage-laden band. It's time to put the bundle down and travel back to this golden age. For your voyage... May we humbly suggest the only cigar worthy of being packaged in a handmade marble box. Berlin Wall Series from Hammer and Sickle. 
live well. It's an exquisite day here at the Jensen Estate patio overlooking the 13th green. And we're underway. Jim Jensen has chosen his favorite stick. The Diamond Crown Number 4 by J.C. Newman. See the way he holds the cigar, Tom? Mm -hmm. Excellent balance and heft. Ooh, he's eyeing the silky Connecticut Shade Wrapper. Fermented twice for the smoothest, richest flavor. And hand-rolled by the Fuente family with a blend of six to seven distinct Dominican and Caribbean basin tobacco leaves. Each lovingly aged for at least five years. Oh, now Jensen's lighting up the diamond crown. He's got a precision burn, Tom. Mm, those highly complex flavors with hints of dark chocolate really deliver, Bill. Yes, like all cigars in J.C. Newman's premium diamond crown line. That'd be the highly rated Maximus and the Julius Caesar. Ah, now Jensen's settling in, rolling the rich smoke through his nose. Look at the satisfaction on his face, Bill. Oh, a thing of beauty, Tom. Experience the premium diamond crown brand by J.C. Newman at select retailers or diamond crown lounge near you. Find us on Facebook at J.C. Newman Cigar or visit diamondcrown.com. I want to talk to you today about my friend Glenn Case from Christoph Cigars. I've known him for many years. Glenn is a very nice guy, one of the nicest guys in the industry. Always friendly, always happy. So when I heard his brand Christoph was pissed off, I was surprised. Christoph Cigars have always been known as smooth and rich, and the pissed off Christoph is just that. But there's something else happening here. The natural San Andreas wrapper, the binder, Indonesian, and the filler, Nicaraguan. And like Glenn Case, the cigar starts off sweet, but then it gets pissed off. And like Bruce Banner, you don't want to piss off Glenn Case about Kristoff cigars. Or do you? Expect some spins and a nicotine kick. Strap yourself in for a ride. Pissed off Kristoff is deceivingly strong. You've been warned. Sold in 10-count boxes. Four sizes, including Churchill, 6x60, Robusto, and Corona Gorda. The hottest new brand is the Pissed Off Kristoff. Take it for a ride. Since 1964, Padron Cigars have had the same mission. With over 50 years spent to create a perfect cigar, and more than 100 years to create a perfect legacy, the Padron family understands the significance of time. Padron delivers only the finest handmade complex cigars with the flavor of the Cuban heritage, out of which the Padron recipe was born. The Padron mission is simple, exceptional quality of their cigars and not the quantity produced. As a vertically integrated family-owned company, personal attention to every detail is taken in all steps of the tobacco growing and cigar making process. Padron Cigars, they give you, the cigar smoker, the confidence that each cigar is the same. Perfect. Padron Cigars, handcrafted since 1964. I want to tell you about my friend Hochi Blanco, a fourth generation Dominican cigar maker known for growing tobacco and producing highly acclaimed cigars for other people. If some things stay the same, other things have to change. Finally, Hochi's factory, Tobacco Lera Palma, has produced a cigar that not only belongs to the factory, but pays homage to the cigar rolling room known as La Galera. The La Galera Connecticut blend is special, using an Ecuadorian Connecticut wrapper surrounding a Dominican blend of Peloto Cubano, Yo-Yo 98, and a varietal that Hochi named T112. With the exception of the wrapper, Hochi grows all of the La Galera tobaccos himself and carefully watches over every step. The flavor, smooth, but still offering plenty of flavor in all sizes, paying homage to the people and tools used in the factory. Now for the amazing pot. La Galera, Connecticut has a suggested retail price ranging from $4.95 to $6 and has been awarded the Cigar of the Year by the Cigar Authority. La Galera, Connecticut, creating their own version of the Connecticut cigar because they demand more. Got Jason Wood from Miami Cigar and Company and you're listening to the Cigar Authority. And we are back live in the La Flor Dominicana sound stage. And I'm having my first tattoo of 2018. No, it's not ink. It is a cigar, and uh, it's part of the Cigar Authority care package. Welcome back, everybody, to the Cigar Authority uh, tattoo by Pete Johnson. It is a valued, priced Nicaraguan cigar, burning really good. And in, jeez, in, uh, great. I, I would say a lot of things that come out of that factory all have very similar out of that company. 
have a very similar flavor profile. Like we said before the break, Except this one this. is different. Yeah. Well, it's from a different factory than Tatsuya usually comes out of. I'm sure that plays into it. Um, value. What what Cigar, else is maybe a little? What else is made at that factory? You know. Well, off the top of my head, no. I do not know. Um, usually, people advertise it's from my father cigars. So brands that they do for other people, maybe some. I yeah. mean, I could think of some with a similar flavor profile that might come from the factory, but they always say made at my father. Okay. They don't say tobacco box. Yeah. So, so Barry, this one is not my ring gauge. What other sizes does this come in? Well, this comes in. Uh, there's a robusto. Um, you're gonna make me look it up. I know. Well, I need to know. You don't have to go shovel outside, but you can just Google that. <laughs> <laughs> what, there's no ditch digging? <laughs> yes. So you got the uh, Caballeros, which is the Robusto at 5x50. You got the Universo, which is the Toro at 6x50. You got the Bonito, which is 6 and one eighths by 52 Torpedo. And the one we are smoking today, the Adavino, which is 55 by 58 And Adavino in Spanish means fortune teller. I expected that question, so I looked oh, up what wow. it meant. All right, so yeah. So the closest there to uh, Ed Sullivan's ring gauge is going to be the torpedo, would be my guess. Because he could have cut it so it's thinner gauge and right. valve, he likes a thin cigar. Uh, but the thinnest ring on the cigar is the Robusto and Toro with the traditional 50. Okay. And All right, I'm ready to go. And the Robusto, you look at it, 499. Unbelievable. Yeah. Okay, so value, value, value. You're looking for a good value cigar. This is the one. All right, I'm ready for the state of the cigar industry address. What you're about to hear is information, fact-based information. This is the state of the cigar industry I've been putting together for myself for well over 20 years because shit happens. It helps me understand where the industry is and what I can do to move my business in the right direction going forward based on the information you're about to hear. I acquire the facts from many sources. I'll try to provide them. As I go along, the State of the Cigar Industry Address, January 6th, 2018, there was a slight increase this year, 2017, for imports of large cigars. This is value at more than 76 cents factory cost. That's what a, uh, the cigar we're dealing with. Up 2% nationally, according to the Cigar Association of America, although the Dominican Republic had a good year with about 5% increase in imports. It is believed that Nicaragua may have taken the lead for the first time in history as the leader of importing into the U.S. The final numbers have not yet been calculated, but it's going to be close. That's the U.S. Bureau of Census. From time to time, we'll make so slight there, corrections in the there is, units and dollar amounts. There is a good chance, then, that if it didn't eclipse the Dominican Republic, that this is the year that Nicaragua takes to the first place. Right. It's going to be that close. And it's been happening year after year and getting closer and closer. And keep keep in mind that in the 70s, there were no cigars imported into the United States from Nicaragua. There was an embargo. Right. So you're talking um, in, a, in a very short time, in a, in a 30-year span, that it could be the, the most imported into the country. And yeah, the embargo was in the time of the Sandinistas. Yes. And uh, I think Reagan put it in place and removed it. Yeah. Well. Why do you think Nicaragua is stepping up so big in, in the world of cigars? And maybe it's because the, the taste profile for the U.S. Uh, user has changed a bit, and it's getting a little stronger as time is going on, maybe. There's, there's less mm -hmm. new people getting into cigars and people are maturing, the people that are into cigars are maturing. I think with the cigar boom, also a lot of people left Cuba, and they wound up opening their own factories. You know, you have the Garcias, you have A.J. Fernandez, and maybe they brought a different style of thought to the cigar making that was so different in the DR. It helped create a new interest, and the new interest is, you know, the younger people, as the older people die off and the younger people are now smoking more Nicaraguans. Yeah. So I think it was the change in the way cigars were made. Yeah. So it, it's very, very close between the two right now. Uh, as far as cigar stores, mature retail cigar stores were mostly down in units of cigar sales for yet another year across the U.S. The IPCPR reports that sales in sales dollars showing consumer recovery of premium cigar goods which include cigars, were up. Dollars were up. Units were down. Custom accounts. 
Amounts of customers per day were down in most retail shops overall. That's all retail, not just cigar retail, but that includes retail cigar stores for another year. All brick and mortar shops nationally, um, not just, once again, cigars, right. but brick and mortar is down. Uh, on that, Black Friday reports show that brick and mortar retailers were down 11% in sales. From a down, already down year. Yes. And 6% in custom accounts. And that, that's for all retail. Uh, but I believe the same is for cigar retail. Uh, the same also for local, Shop Local Saturday, which was trying to get people to come in to brick and mortar on Shop Local Saturday. Sales were down once again. Uh, we saw the same uh, in cigar retail. Uh, I certainly did for myself anyway. Cyber Monday once again broke all records for sales. And growth in the economy has somewhat recovered. Online sales are reported up double digits Ooh. for yet another year. So good, bad, whatever, this is information that I put in so that, you know, this is the facts. So I might as well know the facts. The IPCPR survey to U.S. cigar retailer members, a very small sampling that reported, they reported holiday sales, 18% reported Sales drop-offs, 26% reported sales were about the same in comparison to the same period in 2016. More than half of the very small reported sales were up. So more than half are saying they reported up. This is based on the IPCPR of the people that answered the question, which is a tough, tough thing. Like You don't want to answer if your sales are down, so maybe sure. you don't answer or whatever, but this is the fact-based information, so I put that in. Uh, tobacconists did not see an increase in custom account, but the average customer spent more in 2016. As for store traffic over Thanksgiving and the holiday weekends, down or relatively flat compared to the same period in 2016. Now, back to that last point where the customer appears to be spending more. As a result of no new products coming in, there has been fewer mm -hmm. limited Never edition really. type products, but the ones that have come out – have sold very, very well by the box. But there's less of them. There's less of them, but more of them are going by the box than by the single. It used to be there were so many, it was like, all right, I'll take one of these, one of these. Right. Now there's, if there were 100, now there's three. All right, I'll take a the box. box. Yeah. So that would make the customer spend more. The average but, customer account makes right. sense. So people are spending more, but less people are coming in. That's how I see it there. Uh, my personal interviews with key retailers after the holiday season reported much of the same. So I try to go even further, and this is what IPCPR, this is what I'm seeing. Let me call some of my buddies up and see what happened to them and say, okay, off the record, you know, I'm not saying who they are or anything. What is it? Tell me the truth and try to get the information there. The conclusion for the calendar year 2017, imports increased in units, that's cigars. Retailers had a decrease in units of cigars, and online sales increased in units of cigars. For internet sites, this has uh, been happening not just in cigar retailing, but lots uh, of retailing. Brick and mortar retailers are complaining that they are now showrooms for the internet, and this is true. Cigar retailers are selling singles as consumers are tasting in their stores and buying bulk online at discount prices. Some online powerhouses and manufacturers are building tasting ground shops, now known as branded cigar bars or lounges, to have them on their brand through the experience of their lounge and then to buy that brand online. That's what's going on. In 2017, 12 billion cigars were sold and consumed in the U.S. This is all cigars. Not That's just premium. large cigars and premium. So 12 billion. Of the 12 billion, half of them are little cigars like cigarillos. And that leaves 6 billion large cigars. Of the 6 billion large cigars, less than 5% were handmade or what we call premium cigars right now. That leaves us 300 million premium cigars sold in the U.S. in 2017. Roughly the same as the year prior. Just roughly, basically right? flat. A little bit up, but roughly flat. There are 323 million people in the U.S. 23% of them are under 18. That leaves 249 adults in the U.S. So that's less than one it's cigar. only 249 adults in the whole United States. Million. Okay, just checking. Million, yeah. 249 million adults. Less than one cigar per day per year uh, is what it comes out to, maybe a, a little more than one cigar per year. 2% uh, of adults in the U.S. consider themselves 
cigar smokers. There are 249 million adults times 0.02 is 5 million cigar smokers. So how many cigar smokers are there? There's 5 million cigar smokers. Of the 5 million, less than 5% of them are premium cigar smokers. So broken down, that means we have about 250,000 of us, 250,000 in the U.S., premium cigar smokers. How small when it gets and There's down. only about 5,000 of them on Facebook in these groups total. So Wow. But that, that, you, you break it down, 250,000 premium cigar smokers in the U.S. Maybe somebody had a premium cigar before if you gave them one, whatever, but a consumable, a consumable person. 250,000 premium cigar smokers. It's a small number. Uh, in the total 50 states, which leaves about 5,000 premium cigar smokers in every state on average. Right. 5,000. Of the 5,000 premium smokers in every state, over 60% of them, 60% are buying online. So that leaves just about 2,000 total people in each state who buy from brick and mortar stores. So you got a brick and mortar store, you're a retailer out there, there's only 2,000 people that you are splitting up in the average state between everybody. I would like them all to shop here at yes. the Two Guys Smoke Shop in Salem, which is my store. 2,000 people divided by every brick-and-mortar retailer who sells cigars in that state. That includes every convenience store, gas station, liquor store, golf course, you name it. 2,000 consumers divided by every outlet. 2,000 cigar smokers who buy premium cigars in brick-and-mortar in each state. Now let's look at the numbers uh, of cigars, less than one cigar per day per consumer smoked. Cigar Aficionado states 25 years ago that um, just two cigars per week is a cigar smoker, but it's closer to one cigar per day is the argument I will have based on all the information yeah. for all the years that I've acquired of what it is. And again, their, their statement was 25 years ago. Um, less cigar smokers, but more than twice the amount that they were smoking. And you got before. guys like Ed Sullivan bringing the average up. Right. There's he's some, doing his part. And, and I Barry, think all, we, all of us are. More not than, to the level that he's at. No. If you go to our estimated, let's call it one cigar per day per customer. Here's how the stats go. The average state has 80 outlets <laughs> that uh, those 2,000 people can get a premium cigar at. Um, that's convenience store, gas station. But of the 80 outlets, outlets to carry premium cigars one way or the other. Let's look at the numbers again. The average state has 2,000 customers who buy premium cigars. The average guy is smoking one cigar a day, and the average cigar is $8 in retail. That's the average retail price of a premium cigar. And the hole in the bog, in the bog down in that valley. There we go. $8 times 2,000 people consuming one cigar a day is $16,000 a day per state. Divided by the 80 outlets that sell cigars. How the hell could you raise taxes on that? This is the thing. We are such a teeny tiny industry. How could you possibly look There's at sixteen thousand dollars and go, "Yeah, I want a piece of that." Right. Sixteen thousand dollars in total premium cigar sales per state. Put a tax on rice milk, and you can make more money. If you took that and you equalized it, it would be two hundred dollars a day each store would do in sales, but. Um, that's just $73,000 a year in premium cigar sales. But the average tobacconist uh, is five times that. A tobacconist, meaning they specialize in cigars, in premium cigars. They're five times that, which is only $365,000 a year. That's $1,000 a day. The national average of a cigar retail store is averaging $1,000 a day, $365,000 a year. So if you are a cigar shop out there, and you're doing $365,000 a day, you are yeah. average. If yeah. you're doing more than that, you're better than average. If you're doing less, you're doing uh, less than average, and uh, it's time to pick up your game. Let's look at premium cigar industry as a whole. The premium cigar industry brings in slightly over $1 billion in sales to the U.S. economy. Slightly over $1 billion, brick-and-mortar retailers brought in 40% of that, which is $400 million. Every single one everywhere. Uh, let's look at the hard goods. The economy improved, continued to help luxury items such as humidors, expensive lighters and cutters, hard goods, and cigar smokers were slightly up in 2017. That has helped the sales and the average purchase numbers 
at cigar shops. Well, you got a company like Vertigo putting out such high quality products, right? Like the Bond. But $29. Limited release cigars the past year were absent for most for the most part and expected to get worse in 2018. The FDA layering down on the cigar industry, most manufacturers have not put out new brands, sizes, or product. Uncertainty has hurt the industries for potential growth. In 2017, lacked newcomers and created the behind-the-scenes mergers and acquisitions, making the bigger companies bigger and the smaller companies struggle. So newcomers, that's another thing that has not happened, and this is probably the first year we didn't see new companies emerge. Right. Never mind. Well, they can't. Right, because they can't. So that has hurt, and that has hurt Barry, who, who blogs about cigars and new things that happen. And you, you've seen it in his recap of um, Cigar News. Yeah, I got nothing this week. You know, that is part of the problem. That a lot of new things aren't happening. You heard it here first, uh, Ed Sullivan. Barry is part of the problem. That was my interpretation of what was said. Just there. making sure I wasn't the only one. So box to single ratios. Box sales versus single sales continue to drop in retail cigar shops. Retailers continue showcasing singles. Brick and mortars have become sampling sites, single cigar sales shops, and tasting grounds to try before they buy online. Events such as Buy Three, Get One Free have geared up to accomplish just that and continued in 2017 with no end in sight from the manufacturers because I think that's their plan to do it anyway. Online sites control 60% of all cigar sales in the U.S., and 80% of that are coming from just six companies online, four of which are the suppliers who make the cigars that fill up the cigar stores. Monopolies are growing, and this is expected to continue in 2018, as there is no pushback from retailers. Other suppliers will soon follow this because of the lack of pushback. Well, and that goes back to the crystal ball episode where everybody, each one of the major players, you've got five or six yeah. major players, each one needs to have their direct-to-consumer outlet, outlet, which is what's happening. More direct-to-consumer in various forms, including mail-order, internet, direct-to-consumer, internet clubs, blog sites, wholesale clubs, and more expected to open in 2018, including their retail operations, where 50 are expected to open in 2018 from manufacturers, direct-to-consumer, 50 more outlets. So remember how little we said that there is to end up getting, and 50 more of them, and those are the manufacturers to begin with. Cigar bars and lounge out. Lounges are opening up in large numbers as tasting grounds for online sales. I say that because they're building them to try here and buy online because we own the online site also. Have the experience in our beautiful lounge and now buy it online and we own that too. Most states set up minimum age to purchase tobacco products at 18 years, but many have gone up and more are expected to go up in 2018 to 21. Again, taking a few years out of the mix there too. FDA user fees came into play in 2017 and is expected to see more price increases due to that as cost of goods also in the early 2018. I've been writing this, but it, it happened. It already happened. Right. Um, prices are going up. We have price increases started January 1st. Some have started January 15th, January 17th. Um, you know, most of the fact is you, some of them end up happening in the day they go up is the day we get the information so that we can't buy in, in other right. words. Online and catalog cigar giants who own the largest manufacturing has aggressively began to open up stores, cigar lounges and bars, as I say, across the country have been announced they will continue to do so in faster expansion while working very closely in co collaboration with their online sales driving even more business to them, providing tasting grounds, stores, lounges, and cigar bars to push, to be pushed into trying at the experience and then to buy online. This appears to be the long-term strategy and the disruptor of brick and mortar as we know it. Consolidation of cigar companies, online retailers, brick and mortar cigar shops, lounges, cocktails, uh, through acquisition is expected to continue with some big announcements coming in the very near future I already know them, but the uh, announcements are coming in the very near future because this thing is happening as I said they would. Just give us a little. Can't give any. Give of it a little hint. So that's you don't it. Don't have to say where you got the information yeah. from. 
This is the state of the cigar industry address as I see it today, January 6, 2017. And as I said, I do this for myself as a cold slap in the face of the real truth of the cigar industry, where it has gone and where it is headed. I look to make informed decisions for my path as I take this information and go forward on my business. Based on the information, what should a cigar retailer be doing for their business right now based on that information is the question I have for you. I would say uh, you've got to take a look at who these suppliers are that are going direct to consumer and back off their products. But these are the same suppliers that have been pushed and promoted through the retail operation. To, for any cigar to actually have made it to that level, it was born in a brick-and-mortar retail shop. Correct. <laughs> it's events and promotions and things to get. The first time you tried it, you did not try it online. You bought it in a brick and mortar shop because the brick and mortar shop did the event and promotion and, and brought it in there and, and it was a buy know, three get one free. Yeah. You know, and it's which is the magic number by the way, by that once you've smoked a cigar or consumed a product that's four Phil, times. Phil Amara said that when they used to make the little four packs of cigarettes and give them away. You've now acquired a taste for that product. Right. It is something that you will rebuy. Part of the problem is a lot of the cigar shop owners are hobbyists. You know, they'll sit at the register or they'll hire the person to sit at the register and wait for the person to bring up cigars. And they're not going to break away with it. We see it with retailers throughout South. We see it with retailers all over the country. They're going to still carry the cigar that their consumer will be able to buy online at close be to the same price as their buying it costs. And they're not doing anything in their power to wean the customer off of that cigar. There are far better cigars, but they're comfortable with the name, so that's what they're going to grab. It should be up to the shop owner to stop being a hobbyist and actually be a salesperson and show people other options that will help their bottom line, and it will help the consumer enjoy cigars even more. Yeah, but in, in one thing, as a business owner, you have it, and you have consumers coming in looking for brand X. How do you not have brand X? Because you got to pay the bills, you got to keep the lights on. Sure, right. And you the, still have how in. much? How much can be blamed on someone like Skip Martin who refuses to make more cigars? His stuff sells out as soon as it comes in. It's gone. Yeah. And now <coughs> that customer has to go someplace else. Where if he just added Skip, if he just added six more pairs of rollers every year, you could supply us with more cigars. Well, part of the problem with that though is you mentioned the cigar groups earlier having like five, six thousand people in it. Some of them more. Uh, but those are the only people looking for Skip's cigars. The average Joe coming off the street doesn't know who Skip I Martin disagree. is. I disagree. I disagree. We have a, a very nice uh, gentleman who doesn't even speak English that comes in every single day, five minutes after we close, yeah. and he walks right over to the case, and he gets himself a Skip Martin cigar. But how do you think he found out about it? It's only advertised really on social media through word of mouth. Yeah, they don't advertise. They, and, and not in a lot of outlets unless he just <clears> happened <throat> to come in one day and bought one and liked it. And he, he picked it because he liked what it looked like or, or that one of us talked to him, although he doesn't speak English. But I do the best I can. I usually just go a little slower, much louder. Add the O <laughs> at the end of it. Correct. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they call me El Helpo. So, you know, I've been successful in, the, in cigar retailing, 33 years in it. We're still going and we're going good. But I put this stuff down so that I can look at it and say, this is the fact. So live with that this is the way it is. It's history, right? It already happened. Yep. And this is the information I have of what's going to happen this year because some of these companies are publicly traded companies. They actually have to tell. Right. All you do is just buy a couple of shares of stock. You get all the information. And now here's where they're going to go too. So what should I do? But the Sounds problem like buy is, more stock. No. It, <laughs> part of the problem is, I, you know, and I said early on that this came about because – Massachusetts did the tax, and when that ended up happening, I freaked out, and I'm, what the hell am I going to end up doing? And I went to the state house and yelled and screamed and tried to try to stop it. And by yourself, you can't win. You can't fight city hall. You you know by yourself. If everybody got together, but the problem in this whole industry is everybody does not get together. Everybody is running their own little business, and it matters. They you well, know, they look. I want to do what you're doing too, but I can't do what you're doing because I got to pay the bills and. This guy's coming in for Brand X. I have to have Brand X for him. I can't take the chance of not having Brand X because I'll lose the sale. Maybe I won't get him back. Maybe I will get him back, but I can't take that chance. 
or the guy down the street he's has not, it. He is not your customer. He's the customer of online, period. Right now, he's in there buying a the cigar from them. One I mean, I, I try to play it and try to look at everybody of how they're running their business. I'm running the business the way I'm running the business, and I'm trying to keep my business long term. Sure. Short term, I may lose a sale, but long term, maybe I'll keep my business because that's my goal to keep it going. And even after I'm gone, 18 employees. Going. Yeah, but yeah. You, got, you got the customer for buying Brand X at $150 a box, a box a week. That's $7,500 over the course of a year. But math isn't that bad. Can the average brick and mortar store afford to lose a $7,500 customer? No. 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 And a lot of people are going to be loyal to the local store. And I and, think more and, people need to be lo loyal to the brick and mortar. But that is the plan of these guys that are doing – their plan is they know you can't do anything about it. Therefore, we can t we're allowed to take your customer. And, that, and that's the sad part of it. So, again, support your brick and mortar store. It's, I know you're going to pay a little more for it especially you're in tax states and things like that, but there's going to be no place to go. Right. And if you don't live that. near a brick-and-mortar store and you got you got to buy online, buy online for somebody that's a brick-and-mortar owner. Yeah. You know, that sounds like another shameless plug. You know, I hope no, you're, but not, you're not trying to direct yeah, everybody to us. I can, I can mention I'll just rattle saying. off a ton of yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's it's not just I just wanted to say it so no yeah. one thought you were, you were making yeah, another yeah. plug. So that, that's what it is. I, we get that information. We're going to have our um, – Staff meeting. Staff meeting Tuesday, and that's why I like to have this information in advance because this is the information I'll be telling my staff of this is where we're at. If anybody has any ideas what we should do because we're, we're all in this together. You know, everybody that works here is in here together, and I'll say for the, for the customers also that you need to keep us in business, right? In order for us to still have the store, we have to stay in business. The same goes for the store down the street from you. You like going there every once in a while. You better be buying some cigars from the guy down the street or you're going to have no place to go. Right. I so, see it all the time. I'll, I'll go to a bar and somebody will come in with their own cigar. I, oh, saw, I saw somebody come in with their own beer a couple of weeks ago. Oh, my God. <laughs> it, it was ridiculous and the person didn't say anything. Yeah. We could – because it's tough to, to say it. The, the guy has bought stuff and then you got to go over there and how uncomfortable is that that – as the owner, it's uncomfortable. As a as a employee, I'm not going over there and say that to this guy and get in the middle of a fight and stuff and tell him what to do. So then it doesn't happen there also. So you, the consumer, and I'm sure you're not listening to the show if you're that guy, yeah. uh, don't ever do that. Don't ever smoke somebody else's cigar in somebody else's cigar store or bring a beer into a into a bar yeah. or a sandwich in a restaurant. Yeah. Do I even have to go here? No, nope, but I think in a few weeks from now we should redo the Ten Commandments. Yes, we should. We should. Because that is the number one commandment. All right, let's go to break. When we come back, I'm excited for it. It's part two of Cigars and Candy Bars, the triumphant return. But this time, it's Scotland versus the USA. Bar versus bar. And what cigar would appear best with them? Yes, folks, we're finally running out of material. <laughs> we're live from Two Guys Smoke Shop in Salem, New Hampshire, in Studio 21 podcast cafe you're listening to the cigar authority on the united podcast network stepping into the aging room has a new meaning at aging room cigars as rafio nodel has traveled to spain where the idea for aging room solero was born the solera method of aging has been used for centuries in the making of wine sherry brandy and rum the method mixes different vintages, allowing them to age together. For Aging Room Solera, Raphael takes several tobacco vintages and puts them in bales where they age together for another 12 to 18 months. This allows the tobaccos to marry for a longer period of time. At the end of the aging process, Aging Room Solera becomes a balanced and complex cigar with a fantastic price point. Aging Room Solera. It will have you call it for an encore. In a time where humidors are overflowing and retailers' shelves are on the verge of buckling, there is one brand that stands out amongst the rest. Sereno Cigar Company offers four distinct blends. The Connecticut, the Medio, Maduro, and Maduro XX, all aged to perfection. Crafted at the La Corona Cigar Factory in Esteli, Nicaragua, each artfully crafted blend comes to life by the experienced hands of master blender Omar Gonzalez Aleman and industry veteran Anthony Sereno. To create this masterpiece, a combination of hand-selected filler tobaccos from the fertile soil 
oils of Esteline Jalapa are aged for over five years and then draped with a luxurious wrapper leaf to bring you an endlessly complex and majestic experience. A post-roll aging process of two additional years allows the blend to marry, creating unmistakable and ever-changing tasting notes that tantalize the palate, leaving you anticipating each and every drop. Visit SerenoCigars.com for a list of retailers, and you can always find Sereno Cigars available online at TwoGuysCigars.com. Sereno, a majestic cigar aged to perfection. You've heard us talking before about the best cigar magazine in the world, Cigar Journal. You want to know what makes Cigar Journal the best cigar magazine? Cigar Journal covers every angle of the cigar world. From exclusive stories and features, insightful interviews with industry power players, detailed cigar reviews, and of course, all the latest news and reports surrounding premium cigars. We're telling you, you will be impressed. Cigar Journal has stunning images, explanations of cigar science basics. This is the magazine for any cigar enthusiast, or better yet, passionado. Cigar Journal covers cigars in the U.S. and around the world and is printed right here in the USA. You owe it to yourself to discover the world's best cigar magazine, Cigar Journal. Available at your local cigar retailer and on the web at their new website, CigarJournal.com. That's CigarJournal.com. You're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Let me tell you a little bit about the Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary Cigar, or what they call the three-peat. Crafted in Rocky's boutique Nicaraguan factory, the 15th anniversary was released in 2010 to commemorate Rocky Patel's 15th year in the cigar industry, and it impressed right out of the gate. The Robusto and the Torpedo both scored 93 points in Cigar Aficionado, while the Toro and Corona Gorda both notched 92 points. The Rocky Patel 15th Anniversary is a robust cigar with notes of toasted spice, roasted coffee, and almonds. Rocky Patel himself has referred to his 15th anniversary as the decade on steroids. The 15th Anniversary has also been named the Cigar Aficionado's Top 25 Cigars of the Year list on three separate occasions. Rocky's only brand to accomplish the three-peat. Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary, Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary, Rocky Patel's 15th anniversary. The La Galera Habano uses a classic wrapper on a staple cigar for a classy company. Hi there, this is David Garofalo of the Cigar Authority, and I want, no, no, I need to tell you about La Galera Habano. The La Galera Habano is an authentic cigar collaborated with the hands of the best cigar rollers of Tobacalera Palma in the Dominican Republic. Blended around an outstanding, flavorful Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, the Dominican-grown Corojo binder, and the filler made up of Peloto Cubano, Criollo 98, and Peloto de Oro, creating a medium to full body, attractively consistent, and aromatic smoke that envies no other. I love this cigar. Have you tried La Galera Habano yet? Well, what are you waiting for? Available at better cigar shops worldwide is La Galera Habano. The wait is over. La Galera Habano. Justo and his father, Julio Eiroa, are continuing the tradition of growing authentic Corojo and now bring you Aladino. Aladino is a true old-fashioned cigar, pure authentic Corojo grown in the Eiroa tobacco farms in Honduras from the original Cuban seed of Corojo. An Aladino cigar represents the golden era of cigars in Cuba, and after one light, this old school smoke will bring you back. Aladino cigars come from JRE Tobacco, a family center company who manage all aspects of cigar growing and manufacturing. This crop to shop operation is fully committed to providing you with quality and satisfaction. The premier Corojo grower in the entire cigar industry is Julio Eiroa, a tobacco grower and master cigar blender who personally guarantees that Aladino will provide you the opportunity to enjoy the true authentic Corojo taste. Take this journey and be part of history in a cigar smoking experience like no other. Aladino. 
This yep. is the Cigar Authority. That's right. The authority. We can't have anyone freak out out there, okay? On everything cigar. Got too far. In. With too much to lose. And out of the cigar industry. Keep our composure. With your host. Come on, Diablo. David Garofalo. Count of three. Name your favorite dinosaur. Don't even think about it. Just name it. Ready? One. Two, three. Velociraptor. Mr. Jonathan. You know what? I respect women. I love women. I respect them so much that I completely stay away from them. Very stunning. What an incredible Cinderella story. This unknown comes out of nowhere. A former greenskeeper now about to become the Masters champion. It's time to light them up. Favorite non-pornographic magazine to masturbate to. It's time. Good housekeeping. For the Cigar Authority. Can we just become best friends? Yep. Okay, I got a photo op going over here. We got chocolate bars and candy, and this is, look at this, it's unbelievable. We're back with our number two, broadcasting live from the La Flor Dominicana Cigar Sound Stage. Cigars made in different countries taste different, but it's also true for candy bars. And while we're at it, we're going to pair, a lot of people pair cocktails with cigars, but how about candy bars? Pairing candy bars with, oh yeah, after eight years we started running out of material, so here we are. Candy bars and cigars once again. And you're listening to The Cigar Authority, broadcasting over eight years, making it the longest continually running cigar podcast. Awarded the Ambassadors of Cigars by Cigar Journal Magazine. Awarded the Top 10 Educational Podcast by Podbean four years in a row. The Cigar Authority is the most listened to cigar podcast in the world. Cigar radio at its finest. The Cigar Authority is a member of the United Podcast Network. Catch the podcast on demand at any time or our daily blog on thecigarauthority.com. Today's coffee is a snowball. This is the snowball fight. Ooh, snowball fight. Jonathan's all about the snowball. A little coconut, a little chocolate. Mm. It tastes like a candy. Do you remember the pink hostess cake? This yes. Fall? That's exactly Nailed what it. this tastes like. Nailed it. Like the snowball. That was called a snowball. He's shaking his head. That's what he tried to do. Except he didn't make a pink. But they had a white one, but which was the same thing. Yeah, it was white with chocolate cake and pink with, I think, yellow cake. I, I think they were known to do a green for St. Patrick's Day as well. Oh, really? Can you do Ed that? Ed Sullivan, you're not supposed to encourage this behavior. Sorry. the two of them. Delicious, though, right? Delicious. Real good. Snowball fight. You nailed it. Nailed it. I'm going to do something unprecedented and give Sean the harp. Ah, that's never been done before. It's a new year. Why not? Why not? I did, uh, since he couldn't make the snowball fight pink, I did make the columns pink for him. Ah, so. not too nice. Not too nice. Okay, so we're going to turn it over to Ed Sullivan right now to explain to us what the hell is going on here. All right. <clears throat> so, you know, I've been going to the UK for a number of years. My wife is from Scotland, and every time I went, I noticed that their candy bars, just your run-of-the-mill ones, are much better. Than what we have here. This is the the Snickers, the Rolo, the Kit Kat, yep. and what else? Twix. We got a Twix. 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 Rolo may be on the marginal side, you know. Uh, as popularity. I, yeah, as I tried to find the U.S. ones. Very I, difficult. I, I had to go to well. multiple places for those, but I'm a fan of the Rolo. You know, I think the the order of this tasting is very important. You You're know. laughing because I never met a candy bar I didn't like <laughs> in my life. You know, it's true. But okay. <laughs> we definitely uh, picked the order. I've given this way too much thought. Yeah. But we're, we're going to start with the Kit Kat because uh, all of these, by the way, are milk chocolate wrapped confections. Do we, uh, do we start with the U.S. Kit Kat or do we start with the... You must start with the U.S. Kit Kat. All right. All right. This for you. Thank you, sir. And Ed Sullivan, you have one down there? I do. Okay. So we're going to sample the U.S. Kit Kat, which I noticed there's no hashtags on the U.S. Kit Kat. But on the uh, European one, there is there is some sort of hashtag. Yes, they have uh, all kinds hashtag of Hashtag different... my break. All right, this is fantastic as I remember it to be. By the way, studio audience, there's plenty up here for you guys too. So we have the U.S. version, which looks like the one you know. And the one here on the, not on the back end of it is the um, U.K. version. Right. So it's not a country, it's... It's the whole United Kingdom has the same candy? Yeah, they may have local uh, manufacturing, but um, I, I'll give you a little background on the Kit Kat. Yeah? It's a chocolate-covered wafer bar confection, 
created by Round Trees of York, United Kingdom, and is now produced globally by Nestle, which acquired Round Tree in 1988, with the exception of the United States, where it's made under license by H.B. Reese, a Reese Candy Company, a division of the Hershey Company. The bar launched on the 29th of August, 1935, under the title of Roundtree's Chocolate Crisp. The product's official title of Roundtree's Chocolate Crisp was renamed Kit Kat Chocolate Crisp in 1937. So, tastes different. The chocolate yeah. tastes different. It's richer. The, in the UK one, it's a fattier creamier which chocolate. is exactly why I wanted the US first right because the mouthfeel it'll coat the palate a little bit more and interestingly enough as you look at the stats on these calorically those are almost identical however the uh, UK version tends to come in higher in fat and lower in sugar and almost without exception the UK versions are much lower in sodium <clears throat> So uh, what's the next one, Ed Sullivan? The next one. <clears throat> so w which one do we like better? UK. UK. So far. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's just me. I just feel like a lot of the milk chocolate in the UX uh, in the US has a, a waxy consistency to it. And it doesn't have the creaminess that you get from the UK version. The UK version of that actually tastes like it's more expensive. Yeah, but which one are we going to next, better Ed Sullivan? Problem. Next, we will go to... The Rolo. Rolo refers to the roll style candy. It's a brand of truncated cone shaped or frustum. We'll define that term soon. Shaped chocolates with a caramel middle. First manufactured in the United Kingdom by Macintoshes in 1937. They are made by Nestle, except in the United States where production has been licensed to the Hershey Company. Now, frustum is a word I admittedly had to look up. That's the portion of a cone or pyramid that remains after its upper part has been cut off by a plane parallel to its base. Mm. Okay. Delicious, as I recall. Forget about bringing Cuban cigars back from Europe. I'm loading my suitcase up with candy bars. <laughs> so I think the, the reason I went to this next is that... Uh, the chocolate we've already noted, but we oh should talk God. about the difference in the caramel. Much softer. Yep. The caramel difference is extreme. Way better. Much softer. The other one is hard, sugary. I might go hey. to the UK just so I can get the candy. <laughs> Dramatic difference in a Rolo. Huge. Maybe that's why the Rolo isn't so popular in the U.S., I wonder how popular it is in the UK. Is, is it very popular in the UK, Rolo? You know, I couldn't find any stats, and I, I found them at the only place I was shopping at, so I didn't do a search of the shelves in the UK. I might have to try a second Rolo. Well, we do need to move to the Twix, right? Okay. So the progression is that's got the chocolate and the caramel with a fairly neutral biscuit, as they say over there. Twix is a chocolate bar containing a biscuit made by Mars Inc., consisting of a biscuit applied with other confectionery toppings and coatings, most frequently... God damn it, I got the left one. Oh, no. You <laughs> and you can tell right away, right? Right out of the gate. You got the right one. What do you mean? Right out. The product... Out of There's two in every okay. bag. <laughs> I one's couldn't made tell by looking factory. at it until I tasted it. The other one's made in the right factory. Mm -hmm. The one that comes out of the right factory is better than the one from uh -huh. the left factory. Unless you're a lefty, then it's reversed. So it's very much like a Kit Kat. Well, you've got the caramel in there, right? Mm -hmm. and the it's cookie. not like a Kit Kat at all. And the cookie crunch. They both have the cookie crunch. But this one's um, not, not a wafer, really. And that's where the similarity ends. <laughs> Chocolate, caramel, wafer. Kit Kat doesn't have caramel. It's a completely different confection. And it's a wafer versus a cookie. Okay. And this one's fairly modern by comparison. First produced in the United Kingdom in 1967. Introduced in the United States in 1979. <coughs> I can never eat another candy bar from the U.S. It's not dramatically different. Dramatically different. I don't see it. Yeah, softer caramel. Mm -hmm. The biscuit's a little crunchier and thicker. And the... Look at... What is sheen on that chocolate? No sheen on the U.S. one. Sheen. The cookie is much better on the Scottish Twix. 
I don't know if this is good radio, but it's delicious. Mm. <laughs> it's compelling. Remember the guy that wrote in that hated us chewing on the... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's going to deal with it for about a half hour now. He's pissed. <laughs> okay, and next up... Next up is the Snickers, which has the most components to it. Uh, in 1930, Mars introduced Snickers, named after the favorite horse of the Mars family. Hmm. The Snickers chocolate bar consists of nougat, Barry peanuts. Can't, Barry can't eat a Snickers, so I get choked. Yeah. I'll break out in hives. And caramel but with a chocolate coating. I asked him to do it for the show, but he wouldn't. I ate a scorpion. <laughs> and half the time, you won't eat the snacks, so I'm pulling no, down at this. this is for science. The bar was marketed under the name Marathon in the UK and Ireland until July 19, 1990, when Mars decided to align the UK product with the global Snickers name. There used to be a marathon bar. Wasn't that white? Yeah, it was completely different. Was it right. white with the black in the middle? Was it? Yeah, I think so. All right, so I did the... I, I love the regular Snickers. This one seems smaller. Oh, they were in a slightly different format. It is better, though. I want USA to be the best, but it loses this. The peanuts are a little saltier on the mm. UK one. That caramel is a little payday, softer. The salty payday one. Mm. Way more complex on the UK version. We got UKs up here. You guys be part of it. So to bring it back to cigars, I've identified my pairings with each of these confections. With the Kit Kat, uh, I would be smoking a Wise Man Maduro Corona Gorda. This is USA. That's UK. Yep. And... The Twix, you know, for the most part, I think uh, Maduro's pair particularly well with chocolate because a lot of them have that uh, cocoa component. However, for the Twix, I went with a, a Byron Grand Poema because I'll pair that with anything. I just love that cigar. And on the uh, Rolo, I went Neanderthal HN, another Maduro cigar. And finally... With the Snickers, I'm going Sobra Mesa, Short Churchill. He, so you basically went through your own humidor. I did. Nice. Well, it was about me. Now, when it right. comes to pairing, you've got two kinds of pairing. You have complementary pairing and you have oppositional pairing. So when you go oppositional, you may be smoking a cigar that is sweet. Let's say uh, Rough Rider, for example, has a sweet tip to it. You may not want to eat a confection that is on the sweet side with a sweet tip cigar and have one cancel the other out. So you might go with something like a Sour Patch Kids with a sweet tip cigar. So you have sweet and sour. Mm. The two going back to back. Mm. Big fan. Then you have complimentary. So let's say you have uh, an overly peppery cigar. You may want to go with a cayenne infused chocolate to complement or to take out some of that pepperiness. There really isn't a on-the-market chocolate bar that does that, though. I wish I had just grabbed it because they were... Three to choose from at really? Market Basket. Yeah, you obviously haven't gone grocery shopping ever. <laughs> ever. <laughs> <laughs> but you go to a convenience store or something, you're going to see on the rack? I don't know about a convenience store, but a supermarket. Yeah, they have uh, yeah. some good chocolates. All I know is with the Twix that I just ate, all I can think of right now is a uh, Perdomo bourbon barrel aged Maduro. Berry oh. Star. We're going to have to uh, cleanse our palate a little bit here before we get into our cigar. And you don't use coffee when you cleanse your palate after candy bars. There's only one way to go, my friends, and this is with a potato chip. It's got to be the one with the, with the ruffles because it will help scrape your palate clean. Well, this is very scientific. Well, we're going to go on now to cigars, and the, the world's coming to an end because not only did Jonathan have chocolate, he just took the biggest pile of potato chips. He needs a lot of cleansing. I do. This is for our listener. What's his name? <laughs> <laughs> and you guys stay away from my chips. Turn the bass up really loud in your car. It'll sound like you're listening to some. Uh... All right. Now that our palate is cleansed, it doesn't taste like chocolate and combo because I understand this cigar to have a sweetness to it. I've never had it before. I've actually never smoked a cigar before. So our second cigar today is La Vacata from La Flor Dominicana. And it's manufactured in the Dominican Republic by La Flor Dominicana. It's available in one size, which is 7 by 50 and it features a San Andreas wrapper over Ecuadorian Corojo binder 
and Phil is from their farm at La Canela in the Dominican Republic. A single cigar price is $12.19, while a box of 20 will set you back to $15.99, which is a savings of just under $28 or 11% off the single price on TwoGuysCigars.com. If you're far away from a brick and mortar retailer that carries it, try TwoGuysCigars.com. That's the number two, GuysCigars.com. And I should let you know right now, you're not going to find it on TwoGuysCigars.com. Because we don't have any. They only send out a very limited amount, like two boxes to every store. Good thing we're highlighting Across the country. Uh, But if you go on there and you sign up to be notified, you'll be notified as soon as they come back in stock. And uh, according to Jonathan Carney, they should start appearing somewhat regularly during this first quarter of 2018. Smell the foot and unlit. And it is the most distinct cayenne pepper aroma coming off the unlit foot. No, I think you just put that in your mind. Yeah. I don't get that. Even now the potato chip. All right, let's give it a cut and light, see what it's about. It's time to cut out cigar. The official cutting brought to you by Perdomo Cigars. Perdomo, the brand, while all other cigar brands were raising prices, it was Perdomo and Perdomo alone that cut out the federal S-chip tax <laughs> and actually lowered them. Perdomo Cigars, they stand for quality, tradition, and excellence. <coughs> I'm pretty sure it was Perdomo that potato chipped out the S chip tax. Mm. There was some sweetness there. Barbecue sweetness, barbecue sauce. Barbecue sauce. Chilies, baby back ribs. Yeah, like the barbecue sauce that would be on the little hickory. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, Dr. Jonathan Goodhead, tell us about the uh. bond lighter. <laughs> Can we swear yet? <laughs> This is the Vertigo Bond. It features aircraft aluminum, a single jet, easy striking, easy adjustment wheel at the bottom, and it does have the patented Vertigo big ass tank, and it retails for $29.99. The Vertigo Bond. It's like a little gun. And I should tell you the proper name of this lighter is Bond. Vertigo Bond. Bond. Vertigo Bond. And you are lame, not James Barry Stein lame. Bond, James Bond. Riveting radio is we light up our cigars. Tastes different than it smelled. Mm-hmm. I was told this wasn't going to be strong. It is. <laughs> You're one puff in. You cannot make a determination on the strength of it yet. There's definitely some spice. I'm getting some of that cayenne pepper Strong now. Cigar. Well, David, this is another point on the chocolate pairings. You can go a little bit stronger because you've got the sugar coursing through your veins and you won't get that queasy feeling. Yep. I think that uh, Ric Flair put it best when he said, Woo! <laughs> I am flying right now. With chocolate high. Oh my chocolate God. high. Sugar <laughs> high. Huh. I don't eat a lot of chocolate. This is and then the coffee on top of that, the oh. snowball coffee. Have another plate of chocolate. By the way, the chat room is <laughs> yeah. off- Dave. The chat room is offering you and I congratulations on finally breaking Jonathan. There we go. We broke him down. It's yeah. a new year. No more and, Brussels uh, sprouts. So much um, for us not eating bad. No things. more unlike, didn't even last an hour. Unlike the two of you, I'm actually down in my weight right now. Coming into the the uh, first show of the new year, I lost two pounds. Give, give us time. We'll bring so you up. seven pounds. I gained over the whole. Seven. I'm down to one, uh, one eighty six, down from two twenty two at my heaviest. Huh? You you look heavier than that when you were dancing naked through the snow. You're welcome. <laughs> we all saw that. Thankfully, I, I missed it. Really? <laughs> oh, thank God. I was trying to ignore that. If it was uh, just a little bit warmer, we could have pulled it off again. But man, that snow was deep, and the wind was biting. And you threw the snow on you. Well. The day that we did that video was 50 degrees out, so it wasn't that bad. Yeah. Not the day you did the one this week. No. It was single digits or below? Uh, with the wind chill, it was like 21 degrees below zero. Yeah. But the wind chill number doesn't count. No. It's what it is. It's a dry heat. It's a dry heat. It's a dry heat. <laughs> so uh, let's go to the asylum. Let's look. They're coming to take me away. Ha ha. They're coming to take me away. Ho ho. Hee hee. Ha ha. To the funny farm where life is beautiful all the time. And I'll be happy to see those nice young men in their clean white coats. And they're coming to take me away. Ha ha. It's time for news from the insane asylum. 
odd and sometimes historic news stories that are too insane to be true, or are they? Brought to you by Asylum Cigars. Take no prisoners. Asylum Cigars are truly flavorful, medium-bodied Nicaraguan cigars with sizes ranging from 4x44 to the absolutely insane 8x80 Asylum Cigars. Mexican Roberto Esquivio Cabrera has stated he can't find work due to the obscene size of his penis and the fact that he needs to keep his manhood wrapped in bandages in order to prevent infections. Cabrera has stated he wanted to go on disability and the Mexican government has offered surgery versus disability, but the man has refused to have size reduction surgery on his 18.9 inch manhood. Perhaps we could offer some job advice for him. We hear the website milfslikeitbig.com might be hiring, and there's always a job as a pool boy, which could result in shrinkage. And that's not only insane, it's asylum. They're coming to take me away, haha. They're coming to You're take disgusting. me away. You're disgusting. Oh, <laughs> disgusting. Uh, <they're laughs> farm where life is beautiful all the time, and I'll be happy to see those nice young men in their clean white coats, and they're coming to take me away. I thought he had turned over a new leaf. Last week's was, was very tame in comparison to his regular ones. Yeah. And then right well, back who, on it. Who's the holidays? <laughs> you gave me some stats, holiday porn stats or something <laughs> this morning. That porn drops during uh, between Thanksgiving and Christmas. I'm like, what? <laughs> this is what he comes in in the morning. <laughs> Just I got some stats for you. I thought it was to do with cigars or something. You know, something to do with his job. Right. He's walking into the boss's office. No, that's okay. What do I do with well, that? Well, family members are over. It's harder to sneak peeks at it, you know. Yeah. Speak for yourself. <laughs> uh, next week on the show is the Blind Taste Test. This week, uh, Oliver Nouveau, our friend from United Cigar, is coming up to do a Blind Taste Test event where uh, we have 30 people, and they're going to smoke different cigars, and uh, you don't know which one they are, and I don't know even how it goes, but he's going to do it. So uh, when is that? When the 12th. The 12th. Um, which is what, Thursday? Friday. 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 So Saturday we'll come on, we'll talk a little about that, and we'll do our own little blind taste test for ourselves. And we'll see where that goes. And that's all the information I have. We have no shows lined up, no guests. Well, I no gave nothing. you I gave you all you the did. paperwork. I have it all, and there's just so much going on. You know how many numbers I looked at? Oh, it's been ridiculous. So uh, maybe this week I'll get a chance to line it up and get a show, or else we're going to eat more candy bars next week or something. <laughs> So that's what's coming up. So La Flor Dominicana, La Volaca, Volcado. Volcado, having to do with the volcano. Having to do with the tango. Oh, it is the move where the girl wraps her leg around the guy as the guy lowers her slightly, and that's called the La Volcada. And you can look at the band, and if you can get past the, the pornographic view of it, oh. that the actual move is being performed <laughs> on the band. Ah. Uh. There's nothing pornographic about that well, at all. If she looks bent over, she's in, obviously in a dip. I, she's being dipped. She's I, being wooed. That could I, be the logo for MillsLikeAbig.com. Who are you kidding? I, I think Lido is a big dancer. He's a big dancer, I believe. Which next time we get him up here, pants off, thing, dance off. You have to dance. You can leave your pants on, dance off. <laughs> How about that? Very spicy. Yeah, this is no joke. I, I, I was told, oh, don't worry about it. It's sweet. It's not even it's full not, body. I'm not getting the shakes or anything from it. I but, don't think that it's. I don't think that it's a strong cigar. Yeah, it's a strong cigar. If you look at their but, three most recent releases, the Lanox, not bad. Illusion it's Bowl, in line with that. Lavacada. I think Lavacada might be the least strongest. There's, there's spice and what have you. Right, but it's a lot of mouthfeel. Than the other two. I disagree completely. Are you getting sick to your stomach? No, because I the, eat all those candy not, bars. Because it's not strong. It has a lot of flavor, a lot of mouthfeel, but it does not have nicotine strength. We'll see. <laughs> I give this a six. If that. I could smoke this all day. Can you retro hell it? <laughs> we need to drum roll. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's not a six. It's a probably eight and a half, nine. Flavor, yes, yep. not strength. Strength is nicotine content. Medium strength. I don't. I don't have flavor. a barometer or whatever you use to check nicotine content. I use just your know. stomach. When you get start getting sick to your stomach, now you're in the nines. You're not sick to your stomach. It's 
this Boy, much it flavor. Seems, it seems heavy. Have another potato chip. You'll be fine. It's a nice cigar, but it's, it's heavy. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come up, what's up in the cigar world? We'll see if Barry has anything. The offer of the day, the classic three-way, and lots more. We're live from Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. You're listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. Let's talk a little about Rough Rider cigars. So here is where the motorcycle culture meets Cigar Nation. This badass-looking cigar uses the name Rough, but delivers a smooth as silk ride each and every time. Even before lighting one, you can't help but notice its sweet-like honey flavor. Smooth and creamy, resembling slightly sweetened butter. Outstanding! The Rough Rider Cigar is so beautiful in so many ways. We're talking a premium cigar. Imported. Long filler cigar. But wait till you hear the price. Every cigar is in the $3 price range. That's right. Even the Churchill in the 6x60, every cigar is in the $3 price range. Rough Rider Cigars. There's nothing rough about Rough Rider except a name. Rough Rider Cigars. The following message is brought to you by Drew Estate. Drew Estate, the rebirth of cigars and the new Drew Diplomat app. Join me, Barry Stein, from the Cigar Authority on Drew Diplomat. As you know, I am quite partial to Liga Pavada number 9 from Drew Estate. So join me for a Liga and share your experience with Drew Estate. And while you're at it, don't forget to check into Two Guys Smoke Shop on the Drew Diplomat app. Drew Diplomat is now available for the iPhone and Android. To learn more about Drew Diplomat, visit DrewDiplomat.com. That's DrewDiplomat.com. You must be at least 21 years of age or older and a resident of the United States, including D.C. To be eligible for membership in this program, other terms and conditions apply. Search and general warning, cigars are not a safe alternative to cigarettes. Since 1903, when La Aurora Cigars first opened their doors as the first cigar factory of the Dominican Republic, they have defined Dominican cigar manufacturing. Now, La Aurora continues that innovation with La Aurora Dominican DNA, featuring an exceptional blend whose soul is the Andullo. La Aurora pays tribute to the oldest Dominican tobacco process with a cigar that features tobacco that is part of their heritage and their DNA. The La Aurora DNA features this hard-to-work tobacco that brings the unique characteristics of strength, inspiring aroma, and sweetness that creates an exceptional smoking experience that only La Aurora can bring you. Experience La Aurora Dominican DNA with its Cibao Valley Dominican wrapper, an authentic Cameroon binder from Africa with fillers from the Dominican Republic, Pennsylvania, Nicaragua, and Anduyo. Available at top retailers like twoguyscigar.com and is distributed in the United States by Miami Cigar and Company. Jose Dominguez, Jose Dominguez, Jose, Jose, Jose Dominguez. What the hell are you doing? I'm writing a commercial for Jose Dominguez. Well, what you should be doing is talking about how good they are. That Jose Dominguez makes millions of cigars for other people, but saves the best tobaccos and the best blend for his namesake, Jose Dominguez. Not singing a song, if that's what you think you're doing. What I am doing is creating what is known as a donut. Hey, nobody's going to take away your donut. No, a donut in a commercial is when it starts with a jingle and then the information comes in and then ends with the song again. The information is the filling of the donut. Why does everything you talk about have to center around food and usually donuts? I don't know. Listen, Jose Dominguez cigars come in four great sizes and two wrappers. The mild, buttery, smooth, natural and the slightly bolder Maduro, and every cigar is about $5. You know as well as I do, Dave, Jose Dominguez is no $5 cigar. It's worth so much more, it's a sensational value. Okay, here's the end of the donut. You ready? Jose Dominguez. Jose Dominguez. Jose. It's time to light that cigar and stay tuned. Ooh. The Cigar Authority will be right back on the United Podcast Network. Raised in Cuba, 
and steeped in the rich tradition of the Fernandez cigar legacy. AJ Fernandez produces unparalleled premium cigars in Esteli, Nicaragua, ensuring superior quality. The day-to-day -day operations at the Tabacalera AJ Fernandez Cigars de Nicaragua are managed under the watchful eye of AJ Fernandez himself. Through a fusion of inherited techniques and learned patience, AJ Fernandez Wheeler tobaccos are grown from prized seeds which are proprietary only to the Fernandez family. Perhaps the most essential quality of the AJ Fernandez line of cigars, such as New World, Enclave, and Last Call, is the perspective and motivation of AJ Fernandez, as well as the history of the Fernandez family. Enjoy the continuing legacy of AJ Fernandez cigars. This is Mr. Jonathan Carney with La Florida Minicana Cigars, and you're listening to the Cigar Authority. It's not Mr. Anything. It's not. It's not Mr. Anything. It is. He's the, it really gets mail addressed to Mr. He, Jonathan Carney. He lost the battle and can no longer refer to himself as Mr. Jonathan. That We're back rules. broadcasting live from the La Florida Dominicana sound set, and it's candy bars and cigars, and personally, it is the perfect headache. pairing. Imagine you can't handle sugar. I can't. I don't eat enough of it, and I just can't take it. I think you need to add a little more in your body so your body can handle it Wrong. instead of rejecting it. Wrong. I think you'll be happier. So uh, I got to say, it's calmed down a bit for me. Started very, very aggressive in the eight and a half but I'd still give it at least a seven and a half in strength. Calm down a bit. You mean flavor? Nope. It's still full flavored. Full flavored. It's not my first go around here, man. I, I taught you. I taught <laughs> but it's, you how to do this. You're completely wrong. It's not that it's a, it's not strong at all. I wouldn't want someone who's expecting La Florida Minicana strong to get this and be disappointed. I normally can't smoke a La Florida Minicana this dark. I, I right now I would be in the bath. Their, their Lajero does something to me. It loosens things up, and we don't need to go any further than in that. In a good way, right? All right, let's yes. find out what's up in the cigar world with Barry Stein. It's time for What's, what's up? up in the Cigar World, brought to you by Recluse Cigars. You want to know what's up? Recluse Cigars is what's up. Voted the 2015 Cigar of the Year is the Recluse Amadeus Reserva Habano. Every Recluse Cigar goes through eight, count them, eight fermentation cycles, over the course of two full years, they are box-pressed and rolled N2 bar for a perfect draw every time. If you haven't done it yet, be sure to try a Recluse Cigar today. And as we first reported, Icara Pedes left Nat Sherman this week, and he has taken over as the director of specialty retail for Drew Estate. According to Glenn Wilson, the CEO, Drew Estate's recent reorganization into a channel-centric approach with specific strategies, programs, and tactics tailored to meet the needs of our customers at each channel, he is an ideal fit with our evolving go-to market approach. Go-to market approach. Do you know what that means? Uh, do Sell it. directly to the customer, right? Go-to market. I assume that's what it meant. Yeah. And uh, Davidoff has also announced that Richard Krutek will become the company's new vice president of marketing and retail in the USA. He's been in with, the, with. Yep, he's been with the company since 2006. And that's What's Up in the Cigar World. What's Up in the Cigar World was brought to you by Recluse Cigars. The Recluse Amadeus Habano Reserva uses grade A Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, a San Andreas binder, a Dominican Lajero Seco, and Pennsylvanian broadly filler tobaccos, which create a blend we call the Cigar of the Year. Recluse Cigars is What's Up. What I liked about the Glenn Wilson comment, it was so confusing. That most people probably didn't read it to the end, but right at the end, it almost states direct to consumer. Yeah, this is what's going on. Whatever. Whatever. Uh, knowing the information is part of the thing. Mm -hmm. What do you do about it is the confusing part. Knowledge is power. Yeah. At least we know what's going on. Now, if you choose to run your business the same way you always did, most likely it doesn't end very well. So you got to make some changes. What those changes are, leave it up to you. Um, but right now, it's time to hear the Don Raphael offer of the day, brought to you by Don Raphael. Don Raphael Cigars. Everyone has a price. Would you do this? And if so, for how much? Sub-zero degree temperatures out there. Snow. It's cold here in New England. Lick a pole? You're going to go lick a pole? I'm not going to lick a pole. Jonathan wants to lick a pole. <laughs> this is the time on the news, you see a lot of this, is the homeless. 
because they're out there all the time. But th these are the times you really look at it and say, oh, my God, what, what do we do for these people? And there's coat drives and boot drives and all kinds of different things. But would you go up to a homeless man and take a sip from his drink, whatever he's drinking, take a big gulp and get $500? If I'm allowed to give him the $500 afterwards, I would do it. <laughs> Can I have a sip of that? And he says, sure. you got to go up to him. You take a big gulp of it, and then you give him $500. Now, hang on a second. You, I give if, you $500. If uh, you want to give it to him, you give I would it to certainly him. give it to him. Um, if he has a uh, thing of tobacco in his lip, I'm out. Because you're against tobacco. No, because I'm not going to drink his drool from spitting in the cup. That's not. If it's a drink, I would take a sip out of it. And then give him five hundred dollars. Right. If it's a spittoon, I'm out. Yeah. And if he has any visible can I fix, sores, I'm out. Can I pick the homeless guy? I'm out if you pick. I was going to ask <laughs> whether a homeless woman. Because I know the exact guy. <laughs> Go ahead. How about a homeless woman? Could I? A homeless woman? I suppose. What's the difference? Well, the chances of her uh, chewing tobaccos she might dramatically have done, lower. She might have done other things. She probably did do other things. Yeah. <laughs> That's not milk in that container. You do it? You can't stop yourself. Oh. Objects appear in the rearview mirror closer than they appear. I don't realize it until I pass it. There we go. So you would do it, Barry? 500 bucks? As, long, as long as there's no visible cold sores and I can give the $500 to a person, yes. You're just being nice. I'm, I'm tempted to actually give it to both of you to see. Be. Ed Sullivan? No, I think I'm out overall. Yeah. Hey, there's a good you. chance it's alcohol. There's That's a good chance it would be great. <laughs> That's where I was going. But it might not be. You don't know. I pick the guy who looks like he's wobbling a do, little do bit. Do you talk to the homeless? Do you talk to them? I, I don't know any homeless people. No. You see a homeless guy in the street or something, you go talk to Hey, buddy. I don't believe that the people uh, asking for change at the intersection are homeless. I believe they're making more money than I do. Right. Yeah, so I I, oh, I'm not going to that kind of homeless. I'm talking to one in the street in the wintertime that's covered up and Living in a cardboard box under yeah. a bridge. Yeah. But the guy, the guy at the traffic light has kind of ruined it for the homeless person. Yeah. Because the, you know all these scams are going on. And I think the guy in the street isn't going to get money as quickly because of all the scams. Probably true. Probably true. You got something in the mailbag, Mr. J? I do. That's something the following there. message was submitted through the Contact Us page of thecigarauthority.com. And Patrick writes, I don't have a name for it. But between everyone on the show and scheduled guests, it should have plenty of content. One person a week chooses either high school graduation, college grad, marriage, divorce, anniversary, first cigar-related job, etc., and then talk about what they were wearing, hairstyle, car they drove, uh, what the number one song was that week, any genre, uh, and what you were actually listening to and what they were smoking. Call it nostalgia or the looking glass or whatever. Feel free to tweak it in any way you want. What do you think? I'll just give that to you, and maybe it'll spark some... Uh... Maybe it'll spark something. I don't know. It's not that interesting. To... I don't know if you got interesting stuff to talk about. Well, I've been bald for over 20 years. I've only owned... <coughs> don't blow it all. Cars. Don't blow it all now. <laughs> I've already lost interest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we need material. We need material. <clears throat> We're counting on you. I do have some... From the last time, and I'm going to gather it together, and I'm going to fill this thing up. and And, and thank you, Patrick, for this because uh, we'll throw something in there. So we got some ideas anyway, but we got to get to them when we can get to them. And the, really, the the issue, and there's been a lot of people that have sent stuff in, and it's not that they're not great ideas, but the tough thing is selling David on the fact that it will fill a 30 minute segment, and that's the part. So if you have written in, don't feel bad if your stuff doesn't get used on the whole. It's just a matter of it may have been a great idea, but it was only good for a five-minute conversation. We'll take five minutes here and there, though. <laughs> we'll take I, it. I will say that candy bars ran over. Mm. But that, that's a topic that they – there wasn't a whole lot of conversation. There was a lot of chewing, but there wasn't <laughs> a whole lot of conversation. So, uh, yes, go help yourself, please. Uh, whatever you take away, it will be less than I'm going to eat, which is great, and I appreciate it. Uh, we're smoking a – La Flor Dominicana, say the name again. La Vocata. La Vocata. Um, seven and a half to eight in strength. 
argue with me all you want. I, I have to say this for it's five and a mild half. cigar smokers. I'm a mild cigar smoker. It's five and a half to six at best. Six, and I'm pushing it to get to six. If you're calling this seven or eight, what do you call Andalusia Bowl or Lenox? Right around there. See, I think those are stronger than this. No. I'm well, smart, you're dumb. I'm big, you're little. I'm right, you're wrong. And there's nothing you can do about it. There really is nothing isn't. you can do about it. There really no, isn't. Um, you know, and maybe part of, um, of my taste profile I'm getting is Mr. John Carney, and we talk about his love for meat. This is barbecued meat, over-barbecued meat, right? Burnt. It's Yeah, you got some burnt-end qualities to it. I don't know. You know, the inside could still be very rare. Barbecue sauce, I'd say. They told me there was going to be some sweetness to it. It's barbecue sauce, sweet. There's a sweet and spicy component that are playing off of each other back and forth, for sure. Uh, maybe it's a thinner ring gauge. Would you say this was a 46? 7 by 50. This oh is a 50? God. Yes, it is. Huh. Everything seems thinner. Everything yeah, except we, me. <laughs> we just smoked a 58, so it's going to feel yeah. a little bit thinner. Yeah, I'd say this is about So this, is a, this about was a, a Churchill? Yes. It's the only size that's available in right now. Um, you know, maybe there'll be a petite La Vocata, like there's a petite Lenox. Ed Sullivan, you dig on the uh, petite Lenox, don't you? I do. I like that one a lot. How about this for you? <clears throat> strong? No, no. Anything, nothing uh, strong for you. <laughs> no, I've, uh, I've smoked a handful of these already. and Typically, I am not an LFD smoker. I I just find uh, that they're over laharoed for my taste. But this one I don't think is as strong as some of the others. It is not. It is not at the double Lajero by any means, even the regular Lajero. So you've got to think double Lajero for a La ten. Florida Minicana is a 10. 10. And you're saying this is an 8. It's two points lower than that. It's 20% a, a, lower. 20% lower. No. Way more than that. 40% lower. Can you guys meet at 7.5? No way. So no. I, if you I, double 7 this. 7.5 to 8, I say. If you double this, you're at double Lajero. If you double the strength of this, you're at double Lajero. The regular Lajero comes in at like a 7.5. This is less than that. Wow, man, this is heavy. You, how, you, I got no tightness in my chest. Have you smoked this before? Never. Let's see when you as you get down. I'm, I'm a lot further down than you are. So. The combustion mm -hmm. line on this cigar is oh, it's razor thin, impeccable, very aged. They, hey, listen, they know how to make good cigars. No doubt about it. All, All right, right, let's can go I, to the, yeah, what? can I kick everyone's ass now at? Uh, Classic three, Classic three Way, brought to you by Classic Cigars. You've heard of Epic Rap Battles. <laughs> now it's time for the Epic Battle. Wow. It's kind of intimidating to be in the presence of so many great athletes. For this day. Don't tell anyone about this, I'll f***ing kill you. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. In Classic History. Here's looking at you, kid. Brought to you by Classic Cigars. Nervous? Yes. All Classic Cigars are handmade and imported from the Dominican Republic. And every cigar is priced under, get this, under $3 per cigar. You like that, baby? That is more where I came from, yeah! Choose any blend, including the Classic Connecticut for its mild and smooth taste, the Classic Maduro for its bold and spicy flavor, or the Classic Cuban for its sweet, sun-grown, and nutty overtones. That's undertones, you idiot! Whichever classic you choose, it's a classic cigar. Available at twoguyscigars.com, that's... TwoGuysCigars.com Celebrate today with a classic cigar. Mr. Jonathan was the champion of 2017, as I recall. That is correct. And 2016. And it's a new year. Let's see what ends up happening. So it hey, goes to you. Yes, question. Dave, do you want to pull out Wilson and see if anyone in the audience... Ah! Anybody want to join? Play along with us? Anybody? <laughs> Look at a whole bunch of chickens. All right. I guess, I guess it's Ed. Nice try, Ed Sullivan. I saw All right. you. Try to get out of it. There. Well, mostly it was to irritate you. Want to do it? You want to do it? Here, grab this ball. Up. Oh. And it's broken. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. $300 <laughs> microphone destroyed. It's supposed to be unbreakable. So that's a microphone. You talk inside the ball. Yes. Yep. Right Talk right in. Part. Bring it up to your mouth. Yeah. You, you don't have to go right on top of it. Good. Me here. Hello, check. Yep. You don't have to go on top of it, but okay. Okay. And, and if it's moving, name? if it's Roy. moving, it'll shut off. Talk right into the ball. Roy. Roy. Roy, you're in. You're in. And uh, if you win, you awarded nothing. But uh, <laughs> thanks for playing our game. May God have mercy on Where your soul. Where are you from, Roy? 
Uh, Sailor and the Amateur. Sailor and the Amateur, okay, local because of its cold weather out here. Thanks for coming in. You can sit, relax. You're not on there. So how this game works, if you if you never saw it before, it's the date, the closest without going over. If you hit the date exact, you get two points. And uh, that's it. We're going to have six questions, and we get a tiebreaker just in case we need it. So it's going to start with Mr. Jonathan. You'll go third, then we'll move our way around, and everybody will get a chance to go first. So we're going to go to Mr. Jonathan first. You think about your answer as you're going on. <clears throat> Jonathan, tomorrow is January 7th. Yes, it is. And it's Dustin Diamond's birthday. A Dustin wrestler? Diamond. Screech. Screech. That's oh. right. Actor, comedian, best known in his role star. as Screech on the hit show Saved by the Bell. Porn star? Oh, yeah. He, oh, had, yeah. A, he had a small stint there. Really? Dustin Diamond, if you remember who he is from Saved by the Bell, he was Screech. Was born tomorrow. What year? Without going over. 1974. 74, he says. Barry, what do you say? 1982. 82? And Roy, what do you say? I'm going to say 71. 71. Mr. Jonathan will get the point at 74 because it was 77. So Mr. Jonathan gets the point, and we move on to Barry. Barry, tomorrow is Katie Couric's birthday. TV show host for NBC's co-host who became... A CBS news anchor. She also programmed on ABC, making one of the few anchors who appeared on the three big U.S. broadcasts. Katie Couric, born tomorrow, what year? 1965. 65. Roy, what do you think? I'm going to say 1955. 55, he says? 1960. 60. And Roy gets a point. He says 55, it's 57. So, Roy, one point for you. On to Mr. Jonathan. On to Roy. On to Roy. Oh, on to Roy. Nicholas Coppola. Francis Ford Coppola's son? No. Nope. Nicholas Cage. Nicholas Cage, also known as Nicholas Cage, performed the leading role in a variety of films ranging from romantic comedies and dramas to science fiction and action films. You know him. Raising Nicholas Arizona. Nicholas Cage, born today, tomorrow. What year? You'll say uh, 1960. 1960, he says. I say 1950. 1950? And I had 61 written down. 61 for the point, Barry, at 64. Tied up. So one, we got two, a three-way tie one. right now and three questions to go. Back to Mr. Jonathan. On this day, U.S. President signed legislation that authorized $1.5 billion in loans to bail out Chrysler Corporation. On this day, the U.S. president signed legislation that authorized $1.5 billion loan to bail out the Chrysler Corporation. What year? I don't want to go over, so I'm going to say 2002. 2002. 1984. 1984. What do you say, Roy? Uh, 1973. For the point, 1973. It was 1980. It was Jimmy Carter. So Roy has two points. He's the leader. He's winning. There's two questions left, and it's over to Barry Stein. On this day, the U.S. president announced America development of the hydrogen bomb. The American development of the hydrogen bomb announced by the president on this day, what year? 1918. 1918. Roy. Um, Basically the entire audience against us. <laughs> What is it? 1940. 1940, he says. I'm going to say 22. 1922, and Royal take the point. Are you kidding me? <laughs> he says 1940. It was 1953 by Harry Truman. Roy has three points. Mr. Jonathan has one. Roy also has a partner out there. I would yeah, like whatever. the record to show. I got a couple. And uh, Barry has one also. There's one question left. Somebody's going to need two points just to tie, and this goes to Roy. Roy, it's over to you. Don't choke, Roy. Former White House intern Monica Lewinsky signed an affidavit denying she had an affair with U.S. President Bill Clinton on this day, what year? Former White House intern Monica Lewinsky gained, signed an affidavit denying that she had an affair with U.S. President Bill Clinton on this day, what year? I'm going to say 1990. 1990, he says. 1992. 92. For two points. 97. 97 for the point, Barry Stein, but not the win. Our champion is Roy. 
Yay! What was the answer? Oh, <laughs> I always forget the answer when we end up having one. 1998. He was so happy that I didn't win. It was 1998. Congratulations to Roy. And uh, we can award you a whole bunch of Snickers bars. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Roy. So that's the ball. We're looking for um, an advertiser for the ball. And we're looking for better sound quality on the ball. Better sound quality and a sponsor. You could start by not throwing it on the floor when you use it. <laughs> Just uh, I'm not a good throw. Apparently not. Here we go. Well, the one thing I'm thankful for is you didn't take out camera that, one. Well, that's what you say. Don't, <laughs> so that's why I ended up going So you low. threw it at the couch. I threw it at the couch. <laughs> but anyway, good. so it's a blue ball. Yeah. I'd like to invite Zippo Blue to carry it. Ah. I don't think they make it anymore. I think it's, uh, it's I would right. like. You're right. Yeah. It's, it's defunct. It. So, I would like to invite my high school girlfriend, Rachel, to be the uh, sponsor of the, <laughs> <laughs> for the blue ball. Touche, Mr. J. Touche. I owe Barry Stein to Barry Stein. Okay, we're getting really down on this. We're running out of time. The Fleur Dominicana. La, La Bocada. La Bocada. You, you might be getting down on it, but I'm getting really up on it. I think this is one of the best La Fleur Dominicana cigars to date. Um, there's, you know, medium, medium plus, full flavor. Um, I look forward to the full release of these sometime in the next month or so. So contender for the Cigar of the Year. It's a contender. <laughs> it's the first cigar. contender anyway. Mission J? Um, well, I, I don't know about first contender only because they're going to What other competition is there? Well, they're going to have to get a whole lot more um, available for re to really be a contender, Mr. Carney. Um but you know what? It is good. It's performing well. I think that the uh, blenders over at La Florida Minicana are uh, starting to blend outside of their traditional wheelhouse, which I dig. They're showing that there's some growth there for that factory uh, and for that company. So is this I dig Tony that doing this? Yeah, I was just going to say, since Tony has become a little bit more involved with his parents' company, starting with Lenox, Andalusian Bull, La Bocata, it feels like the, the face of La Florida Dominicana has begun to change. And I welcome it. Yeah. They still sell a metric S ton of their mm. double a hero and the hero stuff. So I, I don't see that this is going to replace that. But I do think that this is going to attract new smokers to that brand and that company because it is a departure from their traditional blending style. All right. I that also, is it. I also heard from the rep. And, he, you know, he was very open about this. He didn't say off the record. Uh, when they introduced this show at the trade show. Um, they weren't happy with the way the cigar burned, it, blend, uh, burned, so they took the leaves and they readjusted where they were within the cigar. So if you try to show as your retailer at IPCPR, it's much different and much better, even though the blend is the same. I would say it probably tastes the same. It just didn't burn all that well. You right. Just, so they just re, they rearranged the leaves. Well, yeah. This is burning perfect. Yes, it is. Perfect, as you can see. Um, all right. That's it. Next week, I'm off to the Dominican Republic following the show. Right after the show, I'm heading out. Uh, before I do that, we're going to do the blind taste test in the shop, and we're going to follow it up with doing a blind taste test on the show. Uh, we'll do our own here right next week. Until then, you've been listening to The Cigar Authority on the United Podcast Network. And it's quite possible that you've learned nothing else in the last two hours. So always remember, keep the lid end out of your mouth. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.